Set in the year 2005, a 22-year-old man named David Pacuz lives in Miami and works as a professional massage therapist. The income is enough to cater to basic needs, but he's tired of earning money by touching the bodies of wealthy elderly men. Unfortunately, he doesn't have too many options because he dropped out of college after the first semester. He doesn't talk to his parents anymore since their fallout, and his track record as an employee is terrible because he's been fired from six different jobs. With limited options, he decides to invest his money in high-quality bedsheets, hoping to resell them to elderly people's homes. However, he quickly realizes that the nursing homes aren't interested in getting the best quality for old people. One day, he goes to a funeral where he meets his old friend from school named Ephraim Diveroli after many years. While catching up, Ephraim tells him that he was living in L.A. with his uncle and dealing in arms until his uncle stole money from him. Now, he's decided to relocate to Miami and start a new business for himself. Later, Ephraim takes David to his pot dealer's house, but he gets swindled by some thugs outside. As payback, he grabs a machine gun from the trunk of his car and fires it in the air to scare them. David just watches in awe at how bold Ephraim is and wishes he could be like him. The next day, David goes to see Ephraim in his office and is even more impressed when he discovers that he also sells arms to the American army by impersonating an army general. Ephraim decides to show David how the business works. He shows him the site where he finds different contracts and tells him how he only focuses on the smallest contracts that huge companies overlook. Regardless, even these little contracts are still worth millions of dollars, so Ephraim still makes a lot of money. Ephraim treats David to lunch, and afterward, David goes home to his wife, Iz. She tells him that they're having a baby, and even though he's happy to hear that, he's afraid he might not be able to take care of his wife and child with his current income. The next time David meets with Ephraim, he tells him about how tough things have been, and Ephraim invites him into the arms dealing business. Initially, David doesn't want to be involved in the current war because he and his wife are against it, but Ephraim convinces him that their deals won't be fostering the ongoing war. After accepting the offer, David returns home and tells Iz that he'll be selling sheets to the army, and so she's very supportive of him. Over the next six weeks, David learns more and more about the arms dealing business, securing small but well-paying contracts, and soon, he becomes a war dog, just like Ephraim. They're called this because they're the people who make money off war without ever stepping foot on the battlefield. Soon, Ephraim introduces David to his associate named Ralph Slutsky, a wealthy businessman and owner of a chain of dry cleaners. He provides Ephraim with funding and gets 25% of the company in return, but little does he know that Ephraim is lying to him about the true figures and scamming him. Ralph also isn't aware that Ephraim is selling weapons to all sides of the war and not favoring the Jews like they initially discussed. One night, they go to a club and David meets with a man named Henry Gerard, who happens to be the biggest supplier to all sides of the war for the last 20 years. Later, they receive a call informing them that they got the Beretta deal, which involves them supplying the Iraqi police in Baghdad with thousands of Beretta pistols from Italy. Soon, David and Iz go to the hospital and find out that their baby is a girl. The moment is interrupted when he receives a call from Captain Philip Santos, who informs him of a new law that prevents armed shipments from going directly to Iraq from Italy. David wasn't aware of this, but because of how important the deal is, David lies to him and tells him that they have everything under control. Luckily, later, Ephraim comes up with a plan to send the weapons from Italy to a neutral country in the War Jordan and then send them to Iraq without any obstructions. David and Iz host a dinner party and there, some of Iz's friends advise David to be careful with Ephraim, claiming that he was the one who stole money from his uncle. Just then, Ephraim arrives and gets upset when he sees that he wasn't invited. David explains to him that it's Iz's party and not his. Regardless, Ephraim goes straight to the point and informs him that Jordanian customs have seized their pistols. Captain Santos finds out as well and is on their necks about the issue, demanding a solution and threatening to put them out of business. Unfortunately, Iz overhears the conversation and finds out that David is an arms dealer. She gets upset and ends up arguing with him, but David doesn't have time to sort things out because he has to fly to Jordan with Ephraim. When they get to the country, Ephraim bribes his way around and retrieves the goods. They then hire a man named Marlborough, who is allegedly the best smuggler around to drive them to Iraq so they can deliver the guns. David has concerns about such a risky trip, but Ephraim assures him that it would be quick. 
At night, they arrive at the Iraqi border where they're stopped by patrol officers. Thankfully, Marlboro knows how to handle such situations, so he bribes the officers with packs of cigarettes and tells them that's what they're transporting as well. The next morning, when David and Ephraim wake up, they find Marlboro refueling the truck. David receives a call from Iz who tells him that she finally understands how much pressure he was under. She tells him to promise he'll never lie to her again, and he does so while lying that he's still at a hotel. He ends the call when he suddenly sees a group of armed insurgents speeding their way. David warns Ephraim so he starts the truck with little fuel in it and tells Marlboro to run after them with the can of fuel. He eventually catches up to them and refuels the tank as they move. By some miracle, they escape the terrorists thanks to the American military who scared their pursuers away. After delivering the weapons, they're commended for their success and get paid a lot of money. When they return home, word of their success gets around and their company gains more recognition. As a result, they expand the company and make so much money that they buy matching luxury cars and apartments. David also now has more time to spend with his wife and daughter. One day, David and Ephraim come across an insanely huge deal, requiring a hundred million rounds of AK-47 ammunition. Realizing that such a deal could set them up for life, they decide to give it a try. They both travel to a weapons convention, but quickly realize that it would be almost impossible to handle a deal involving so many arms manufacturers. However, all hope isn't lost yet. Henry Gerard reaches out and informs them of his contacts in Albania, who have millions of ammunition waiting to be sold. Henry reveals that he can't bid for the deal because he's been suspended from doing business with the American military. David is skeptical about working with Henry, but Ephraim convinces him that it's okay, and in a few days, they travel to Albania to check the cargo. After confirming the quality, they purchase them for cheap and take them back to the States so they can bid for the deal. After five months, they win the deal. But before going further, they have to put their books in order so they begin forging their records because they weren't keeping any before. Soon their paperwork is approved and they have to leave for Albania again. Iz doesn't mind that he's leaving for a month and informs him that she's going to stay with his mother because she found the pictures he took in Iraq and found out he's been lying to her. She also finds stacks of cash hidden in the house and after seeing that he just keeps lying, she leaves with the baby. Later, Ephraim visits David and gives him a gold grenade to thank him for all he's done for the company. They then sign a contract that gives them equal pay from the deal. When David arrives in Albania, a man named Bashkim is assigned as his driver. Soon, it's time to finalize the deal, but David discovers that they've been tricked because the bullets were made in China, and as such, they're illegal because of an American embargo. He calls Ephraim to inform him, so Ephraim contacts Henry. Henry, who knew from the beginning, tells them that it's not his problem and says that they should have confirmed everything before buying the goods. Now, David is stuck in Albania because he has to find other manufacturers. However, he's surprised when Ephraim arrives and comes up with an idea to change the packaging of the bullets so that the U.S. wouldn't know there are Chinese. It's a risky move, but Ephraim claims that the deal is too good for them to let slip away. Bashkim contacts a man named Enver who runs a packaging company. Enver agrees to repackage the ammo in new crates for $100,000, so David and Ephraim accept the deal, since it's a small amount. A few weeks later, they deliver the first 5 million rounds of ammunition and there's no problem. David also Skypes with Iz and the baby from time to time since he stayed back in Albania to make sure everything runs smoothly. One day, Ephraim calls David to tell him that he wants to cut Henry out of the deal because he swindled them and has now overcharged them. David advises Ephraim not to mess with Henry because he's ruthless, so he promises to keep him in the deal. However, some days later, Henry and some men attack David in Albania, and Henry warns him not to cut him out of the deal. Enver also informs David that Ephraim hasn't paid him, so he promises to wire the money when he returns to Miami. David returns home and reconciles with his wife, promising to leave the business and go back to being a massage therapist. Unfortunately, when he tells Ephraim that he wants out, he feels betrayed and tells David that he's not giving him his cut of the deal. It turns out that Ephraim destroyed David's contract, so now he's stranded. Left with no choice, he returns to his life as a massage therapist. Three months later, Ralph approaches him, telling him that Ephraim feels bad and wants to reconcile. The three meet at a diner where Ephraim offers David a $200,000 settlement. This upsets him because he deserves a lot more than that, so he begins exposing all of the scams he did with Ephraim to Ralph. One day, David is called by a journalist who wants an interview about the repackaged Chinese ammo. 
He's horrified to hear that the news got out, but pretends not to know what the person is talking about. Eventually, David Ralph and Ephraim are arrested by the FBI, and we find out that Enver was the one who ratted them out because Ephraim never paid him. Ephraim is sentenced to four years in jail for many other crimes. Ralph strikes a deal and goes free, while David pleads guilty and gets seven months of house arrest. Months later, David resumes work as a massage therapist and meets his latest client. He is surprised to see that it's Henry Gerard. Henry apologizes for what happened in Albania and thanks him for not including his name in the testimony. David has many questions, but the story ends with Henry offering him a briefcase full of money if he doesn't ask any more questions. That's all for today's recap. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.